Alrighty guys, round two. Um, pocket screwdriver, not work. I was afraid. I'm gonna break the board or separate it. So this time, I don't know if you can see it, it's really small. Um, both my toolbox, or uh, tackle box in the boat. I'm gonna grab some, this is an eight pound braid fishing line. I'm gonna try cutting the silicone with this. I hope you can kind of see this. I know it's kind of far away. I didn't really have a good spot to set the phone up, but just using a pocket screwdriver to kind of tuck the line in there because along this whole back seam here, there's no silicone on there. It's basically just these two short sides. My problem was I was using a couple small pocket screwdrivers and whatnot, but I was prying and prying, and right in this corner here, the board was not really, it was actually splitting the board for, um, because it was just, for whatever reason, I don't know if there's just more silicone in this area or whatever it was, but I pretty much had it about halfway here, and it just seemed like once you got to this little indentation in these boards it just for whatever reason wanted to it seemed like i wanted to split i didn't want to wreck the board so that's why i'm going to a different route here because basically this whole side i had released all the way up to this point this one i had started but i was mainly focusing on this side and then when that happened i just call it quits yesterday and slept on a little bit and here we are again but yeah basically just gonna kind of use a screwdriver just, if you're doing this just take your time it ain't worth trying to rush this and mess up the expensive board. Get one side's in there. Sorry guys, it's pretty tedious. But yeah, just make sure you cut yourself enough on each end that you get a good half hold on it. And cause it's and basically, I just kind of gently just sawing back and forth and I'm kind of trying to pull straight this way away for myself not versus up because then i mean there's a chance you could catch something or cut bottom or wreck the bottom side of the board so you can kind of see i'm going as horizontal as possible Coming along, slowly but surely. Yep, and that'll happen every once in a while. You'll snap your snap your line. It's the second time that already happened to me, but. Alrighty, so I'm continuing here. Pause the video. So basically I got this trouble area cut Pretty much all the way up to that point it takes a little bit with that with that thinner braid because you can't pull too hard you just snap it and i don't want to risk messing anything up but i was able to cut it three quarters of the way and i was able to i got a kind of like an offset pick here so basically what i did is i kind of pried up in the end back here kind of tucked that corner in there and that part that was starting to peel i worked it from the side that was still attached and just kept slowly slowly picking away at it and now finally as you see it is loose on that corner now so now I gotta come back over to this side. Um, I think this side, if I remember correctly, I could just take some flat blades and kind of work it along again. But I'll, uh, I'll continue the video as you guys kind of got the gist here. Here it is. So I was uh, mistaken when I thought it was separating. It was actually, there's a, um, a backer on this board. Basically, like it's epoxy down, which I did not know. Like I said, this is the first victim I've ever taken apart. So I'm basically giving you guys all the information. <laughs> I mean, I'm risking destroying my board to hopefully try to make a DIY video. Like, a, But I would not recommend this if you don't have any wiring or electrical experience. Um, but so yeah, there's the, uh, here's your Fickham board. That's what uh, 1500 to $2,000 looks like. <laughs> it's freaking crazy. But uh, I'm gonna yeah, pause the video here, get my uh, solder station all fired up, and then uh, I'm gonna get some capacitors out, some flux, and we'll start digging into it. So this next step, you are going to want to, oh sorry, my lens is kinda dirty here, guys. You are going to want to either take pictures or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a black sharpie and just make a dot on the board where each side of these negatives of the capacitors are because they are polarity sensitive. 
You do not want to put them in backwards, otherwise you will find out how to destroy a board in less than half a second. So, um, like I said, I'm going to just take a black Sharpie, and I'm just going to just make a little little dot. That's all you need. Um, and then after we're all done here, I got some uh, electrical cleaner. I'll take a Q-tip, and I'll just wipe off the little black Sharpie dots. I mean, you could leave them on there. It ain't going to affect anything, but it's just how I am. So, yeah. Right, I didn't really show a soldering process for the first half. I just want to see how it would go, just because I know these uh, the solder to use on here is takes a little more heat, and um, well, I'm at 900 degrees, and it's melting just fine. But um, I just want to give you guys a heads up. So the negative side, you can kind of see how they got that terminal bent over. See negative side. So the first one, of course, the one I was pulling out. That's basically why I didn't record it. it's I struggled a little bit because actually that uh, the tail end of that prong was actually catching the circuit board. So I was thinking like, oh shit, maybe I ain't getting enough heat, but I definitely was. But, so yeah, just keep that in mind when you go to pull these out, that if it's, uh, you know, your solder is melted and it's giving you a hard time just to, cause I had kind of twisted it and pushed back and forth and finally it popped right out, so. Yep, but anyways, um, yeah, here's a, here's a new capacitor, I'm actually, uh, Starting to bend over the prong right now. Just using a using a needle nose pliers. I gotta cut that a little bit shorter. Tail end's a little long. A little more. Okay. Should have worn my glasses. <laughs> Usually I do, but yeah, so yeah, just like that. It's kind of hard to see, but essentially that'll pop right back into place, and yeah. Alrighty, so I got the one half of that one peg done. It's gonna be kind of hard to see. Like I said, I don't really have a good position for my phone, but heat up the terminal. So I got the first capacitor in. This is what I'm using for electrical cleaner. Actually, just a little bit on a Q-tip and alrighty. So I got them on there. Probably end up with a few, a little bit more solder than I like on some of them, but I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. All right, so here's the last one. I'm gonna show you again. Bring that little tab over. Fold it over just like so. Sorry, not the best video, but hopefully it uh, gets a point through to you guys. Like I said, I got the. Uh, I know what I want. The black sharpie dot, and which side's negative, and that would be the side you fold over on your capacitor. Basically, I'm just kind of holding it. For the most part, the solder pull out of the positive side of the capacitor, so you kind of got a little guide pin. But as far as the uh, negative side, basically, I've just been dropping it, or starting with the negative side, and as soon as you put the iron on there, it should suck right in. Yep, just like so. I'm just kind of working it back and forth. More solder on that guy. Don't mind me. All right, where the hell am I again? Right there. Well, I'll put this. There we go. Now she's pulled all the way through. Let me do a little flux. So here's a completed project. Some silicone. This is stuff I used. Right off of Amazon, 10, 11 bucks. But, yep, now to assemble back on the lower half and put the top case, on, or basically glue it on the bottom one, let it cure, slap the cover on, put it back in the truck, done. So, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a very good photographer here, 
So hopefully this helps someone out.